Welcome to the Dreamweavers, young one. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 6 of our Spyro the Dragon playthrough. Today we'll be doing Terrace Village, Metalhead, and then probably Dreamweavers and maybe the Speedway or one of the levels there depending on how time goes. Because Treetops took a little longer than I wanted to and then that was about it. We didn't really get lost in any of the other levels. Because Treetops, I missed those gems at that one point in time, which really screwed with the pacing of the video, but it was still a good long video. We still got, what, three? We got the home world, two... No, we got four levels done in that one. So it wasn't anything to scoff at. Oh, so I fully healed up uh, before coming here, so that way we weren't going to die. This level is based on a lot of electricity. These guys actually are, are kind of interesting. They're little electric tanks. Tanks for the memories. Ow. Yeah, man, this level can get pretty intense. Now, the skill point here, it's not don't take damage at all. You just can't take damage uh, with the electrified floors. So that's not until later. To like the second half of the level. And trust me, it's going to be annoying and a little, um, going to require some patience to do. I just realized how many enemies are actually in this level. Oh, I did. I did notice that one up when uh, we were over here because it was blue. Can you stop picking up j butterflies, please. Like, for the love of God, Sparks. We don't need that many butterflies. I think it's. I, th I forget if it's every eight. I think it's every eight or ten. I forget what the the guides say it is for um for lives, but it's like either eight or ten. And oh. Some hidden gems over here. Also, 400 gems and two dragons. It's actually a really small level if you think about it. 400's pretty low lately for regular levels, and two dragons, that's extremely minuscule. Like I said, this world is kind of weird because it's really tiny in comparison to like other worlds with what you have to collect. There's no dragon eggs anymore. There's a lot less dragons per level and stuff like that. These are the floors they can't take damage on. So be careful when, uh, you know, traversing these floors, because you don't want to take damage, otherwise you'll have to die. Oh, it's either take damage from the little guy or from the big guy. And goodbye. I want to clear these guys out before we get the dragon, though. That way they stay dead. All right. And for this guy, you just want to avoid... There we go. Now these guys won't respawn, even though both dragons, once again, are literally side by side. Oh yeah, the fireworks. In the, if you want the achievement, you actually have to flame all the fireworks within, I think, 8 seconds or something silly like that. But in this game, or in this playthrough, we don't have to worry about that, because guess what? We are not doing achievements, because we already have them all. But I will tell you what they are if I remember. Also, this looks like it could be like a wall jump thing if this game had wall jumping. But anyways, let's grab this guy. It's Claude. Watch out, Spyro. The Norks in these parts have discovered the power of electricity. And it really stings. Yeah, you know what's funny? He technically tells you that after you've already fought half the enemies in the level. Which I find kind of ridiculous that it took that long for them to actually tell you that. Oh look, we got Big Chungus over here. Was a Big Chungus over here, that's for sure. Kind of more like a dead Chungus now. No swimming. Or no, no skydiving. Weird this is no skydiving, but not no swimming. All this clucking, man. It's going straight to my brain. Thank you for the one up there. Now I want to kind of kill this guy off first before we do anything. 
I don't remember if the side of the floor can actually electrocute you, so just to be safe, I'm not going to touch that. Oh yeah, this part. This is the part that I wanted to make sure I got. Because I know there's a part where you have to jump down. And I always forget that blue gem right there. I don't know why. This happens. Now let's grab this dragon. The last dragon here, Cyprin. Good job, Spyro. One day you'll be able to tell all the dragons about your amazing adventures. Sure, but what I'd really like to do is get out of this swamp. Yeah, me too. Also, this is terrifying down there. Like... I'm assuming this is like up in the treetops, like really high up. Oh, this one looks a little dangerous. Oh, well, was dangerous to say the least. This guy's kind of weird because he's right at the edge. Normally they're not right at the edge of these. Oh, thank you guys. Also, can you please pick up his gem? Sometimes Sparks picks up gems like really, really close by, which is kind of weird. Let's go over here, that way we have a safety net. Actually, you know what? Since that's the end of the level, let's just go and do all this over here first. Because, guess what? There is a section where you have to glide around here. Kind of reminiscent of, I guess, like Clifftown and stuff, where they, tr they try teaching you about weird gliding spots. So, yeah. Anyways, we got our second firework here, and... I think we have, what, one more firework somewhere, I think? Oh yeah, it's right here. And before you get the one down there, you need to go over here. Oh, they're gonna hurt you. Nah, it doesn't hurt you, that's kinda lame. Suicide by firework would be a painful way to go, but it'd be a way to go, I guess. Oh, we only need 40 more gems. And then we could get to go take on Metalhead. Oh man, all the clucking in the background, man. Cluck these nuts, they are saying, you know? Um, I stepped on the whirlwind and it didn't do anything. Nice, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There, now we shouldn't have any electrified. There we go, skill point! Now we just have to beat the boss without taking damage, and we're good. Let's leave. Another 100% level. Nice, only one level remains. Which I'm assuming will have 500 gems to bring us to 8,000. Alright, all that remains is a metal head. Metal head, metal head. Which actually later becomes an enemy type from Jack 2 and 3. Yeah, there he is, Metal. Also, the only level in this section of the world, which is really weird, there's this entire area with nothing going on. Let's have a drink while we load into a purple sky. Weird. Also, only one boss level has more than one dragon. Which is kind of interesting. The level itself isn't really any longer. It just has a second dragon that just says, thank you for releasing me. Alright, so 500 times one dragon. Like I said, and we need to get perfect on the boss fight. You can take damage in this level from any of these enemies, like these bucket-wearing monkeys. Just not in the boss fight. Oh. Ah, they do make splash animations too. And so many enemies to kill. Like, there's lots of these monkey dudes around here. Like, holy cow. Monkey men. Still don't get why not. There's been very few norks in this actual game if you think about it. Uh huh. You all died. Really? You had to eat the butterfly instead of picking up the gem sparks. Thank you. All right. Um. Let's go back here. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Cause you just get into the habit of like going where the enemies are, so they don't hurt you. That way you can kill them all off. Oh yeah. Like down here, for example. There's some good juicy gems. Only like five gems, or six gems, or whatever it was. Six, seven. Yeah, there's gems up there that we can't get yet, because we need to get higher up. But we can get that way if we go yonder. Oh, I actually got kicked by that guy. That's a shame. Hey, 
Well, what are you doing here, dude? There's the dragon. Thank you for the help. And now, what you actually need to do is you need to go down here to this little sewer gate. And in doing so, you find a secret area. Yeah, another place as a kid that I knew exactly where it was for whatever reason. I didn't have anybody teach me how to play a lot of these games, I just played them and found out everything on my own. Oh great, we have a key. That means it's never going to leave our screen until we open up the chest, and I think the chest is at the very end of the game. Or end of the game? Yeah, end of the game, that's how long you're going to hold on to this chest for. End of the level. Also, it's kind of funny how there's like a bunch of butterflies just like floating above the, the swamp like that. Considering you can't actually eat them or anything, and they, they use butterflies as an aesthetic, considering you actually use dragon or can I keep saying dragonflies? Butterflies. Sparks is the dragonfly who eats the butterflies, man. Like, get through your head, dude. It's weird that they use them to fly over the swamp, considering you can't eat them though. Anyways, let's go grab the first and only dragon of the Metalhead level. Uh, I forget his name. It's Siddiqui, that's why I forgot him. Metalhead is all charged up to meet you. Attacking the power pole should disrupt his power supply. Well, at least he tells you how to beat him. So yeah, we have to do is you have to target these, um, the ones that are green so you don't get electrified. And watch out for him, because he does technically also attack you. And then once you break them all, he'll leave a gem behind in a spot that you can't get to for the time being. And I think you only have to do this twice. He can be annoying to fight, though, because sometimes the level could be a little bogus. But otherwise, not too bad. Also, for a fun fact, the original game didn't have skill points. Uh, Spyro 2 and 3 did, but they weren't used to, like... They weren't, like, publicly shown anywhere. I don't remember that attack, so now we have to die. Oh well. Alright, so we gotta do this again. Like I said, if he throws enemies at it, he can also technically break it himself. Are you serious? I don't think I've ever been punched by him. So now we gotta die again. Like, I have never been punched by him. I didn't even know he had a punch attack. Sheesh. I still don't remember him using that attack that often, by the way. Can you hurry up? Actually, I'm pretty sure you can kind of cheese it if you... Get... What? That wasn't even flickering red! Did you see that? It just straight up hit us for no reason. Okay, this is never this difficult. I don't know what's going on here. Like, I remember that attack, like his electric beam thing. I don't remember the the other attacks, though. Like, the, the wave pulser, and then the, uh, um... Why was he T-posing? That was weird. Did you see him trying to assert his dominance? Oh, he's gonna throw an enemy at us. Yay, enemy. Oh, great. Now he's got two of them. Oh, we killed him. He destroyed the other one. There we go. Woo. And there you go. That's how you get the skill point. Like I said, you can just die, so you can kind of cheese it. But it still is ridiculous that, for some reason, they actually made certain bosses in the Spyro game way harder, and some way easier. They, they up the difficulty of Toasty, even though you'll never really honestly get to see it. But they did upgrade the difficulty, and the difficulty of this boss. And they really changed the difficulty of certain bosses in Spyro th uh, 2. Spyro 3, on the other hand, I feel like it got easier, except for the first boss. The first boss is really weird in that game, 
well, like how we can hit you, and then in like the, the bosses after that, including the final boss, are just kind of jokes. They made them way easier to deal with, probably because the graphics are better, so you can notice like the elements of the fight a lot more. Also, in the original game, this platform over here was extremely difficult to get to. In this game, you can just do that, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get over here. I don't think you can make it back, though. Oh, no, never mind, you can't. Another thing you used to not be able to do. And the last of the gems should be over here. There we go, level complete. Now we can actually leave this world and go to the Magic Crafters, which we will be able to do that, or Magic Crafters, Dreamweavers, which we can complete that whole world and probably at least one more level. We got 8,000 gems. I believe we get to two or 10,000 when we beat this, uh, beat the next world. Luckily, the balloonist is right here. Oh, I feel and he says the exact same go. thing. I'm not gonna, like, let him read it out. He says the exact same thing every time. Also, are those, like... What are the things on the side of the balloon? Oh, they're, um, little flags. But the, just the way they get pixelated every now and then is just really weird. Like, the ba the bags look pretty HD and stuff, but then the, the flags just look super pixelated. Alright, pretty cool sky. And yeah, Dreamweavers. This land is really magical. 300 gems, 3 dragons, and secret room here. Yeah, there's actually a skill point in the homeworld. Alright, so, the gimmick of this level, I guess, is there's a little guy on a cannon up there that turns these enemies big or small depending on what size they already are. And there is a... if you want the achievement, you have to turn one of these guys big and then kill them. So, if we didn't have the achievement, we'd get it now. So, yeah, that's the thing. Haunted Towers is a level here. This level is pretty interesting. It's... Nothing special, but nothing crazy either. Also, mushrooms are your health in this world. Interesting. Hey, I just realized he can run across water. Are you Jesus? So, we'll talk to this dragon so I don't spoil what those guys do. Maisie. The fools you see in this world are invincible, but that does not mean they shouldn't be attacked. Sounds alright to me. Yeah, so, while you can't kill them, do attacking them will cause certain things around you to change. And yeah, that's just a very minuscule one. But yeah, that'll be the gimmick of this world, are like fools, devils, and other magical type creatures. The music here though is really good. I remember getting here the first time as a kid and thinking, wow, this is like an amazing spiral level. And I don't mean this game, because I'm 30, so clearly when this remake came out, or remaster came out, I, I, I wasn't a kid anymore, but the original, I was like, holy cow. Because it was just as colorful, too. That's the one thing I liked about Spyro. Dark Passage, my all-time favorite level in this game, by the way. Hands down. Super cool, super cool gimmick, just downright cool. Now, the cannon will not actually change them to small end. Their sound effects are really loud to talk over, man. We have another dragon here in Lofty Castle. This level's pretty good, too. Haunted Towers, though, honestly, is probably the most annoying level. Just because of one little section. It's not that it's a hard level, just one section could be a pain in the butt. Anyways, we have Latif. Welcome to the Dreamweavers, young one. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. Surprisingly enough, that may sound cryptic, but no, he's genuinely actually giving you good advice. And before you actually even go to a level two, which is pretty useful. Oh god, they're woo! -woo. Yeah, just shush. They're called Armored Fools, by the way. Every enemy in this level is actually a fool. There's the boss, Jacques. Which is, in my opinion, the hardest boss level. And not because he's the boss itself is hard. It's just the level itself is actually pretty uh, intense. There's a lot going on in it. And some really difficult sections, especially in the original. They're not as bad in this version. 
because they did like you know smooth things out a bit but still you know it's one of those ones where it's like oh alrighty so to use this cannon you have to kill this guy and you only need the cannon for literally two little things specifically one if you count it as one but we need to zap these guys to be small and boom done that's all we needed it for now we've already been down there, so we'll grab this dragon, which is the last one, Zakomo. Hello, Spyro. Nicely done. I'll be done when I've toasted that nasty Nork. Oh, huh, weird. The only Australian dragon that we've run into. Interesting. Also, I love like the floating rocks and islands of waterfalls and stuff they added. This really reminds me of I guess technically this game came out before it like in the original, but I don't know if these features were technically part of the original because this is a remaster. But it reminds me of Negrand from World of Warcraft. Alright, so the skill point is actually over here too. And to get to the skill point, you actually gotta go through here and then touch this little circle. Yeah, that was definitely not in the original, by the way. There was no secret room there. You actually don't even need to flame both of them. You only need to technically flame the one and then just jump on the platform before it gets risen up as high as possible. Actually, I still think you can make it anyway. It's kind of weird that way, but whatever. Oh man, I missed the gem down there, really? Well, there's the Icy Flight. I was kind of hoping to do that one next, but... Where are we pointing at anyway, Sparks? Oh, there's two right there. Oh, hang on, there's another one. Oh, we missed a gem way over there. I'll have to go back to do Icy Flight. I kind of want to get it out of the way. That way we can just do the cool levels in the next episode. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I know where I forgot it. Remember how I said there's always a spot that I forget them? Or do we want to do Haunted Tower? No, we want to do Icy Flight, because... Uh, I don't think we're going to have enough time to do that level, because it is one of the longer levels. Because it does require some annoying, like, looping and backtracking and things like that. Oh, we actually have to go this way, okay. Well, at least we completed the level. And once again, no dragon eggs here, because like I said, for whatever reason, they removed dragon eggs from half the levels of the game. But later on in Spiral 3, that actually becomes a gimmick where we actually have to collect dragon eggs and for some reason they're like quadruple the size of what they are in this game. Don't ask me why, but that's just how it is. And in Spyro 2 you have to collect the orbs, but it doesn't feel as special because they don't have any personality, they're just orbs. Except unlike these Spyro games, there's actually cutscenes for every single level, both uh, beginning of the level and the end of the level, which I thought was really cool. So anyways, we'll go do Icy Flight as the last part of this video, so let's go. Nice. Another 300 gems to the collection will be at 8300. Homeworlds always have 300, it seems. Except for World 1. This is also the last Speedway level, or Flight level. But at the same time, it's also not the last Flying level, per se. There is technically another flying level in this game, but it's it's not a speedway, you're not like timed or anything like that. It's not worth 300 gems. You know, none of that nonsensical, boring BS that we have to deal with every freaking speedway. I do, I will admit that this one is one of my favorite looking speedways. Also, we'll get all the, um, all of these dudes here in just a second. I believe we want to go this way for the train, yep. I love how he, like, gives us the fist, like, I don't want to deal with you, Spiral the Dragonic Fool. Oh, I can't believe I actually got that guy. Oh, I actually hit him too? Nice. These guys can be a pain in the butt to hit because of just how, like, janky they are. Oh, another train. Chugga chugga choo choo. We only have one more left to go, and he's right there. And the rest of the little helicopter dudes should be here. And then we're just missing one of the, uh... I don't know why I missed that guy. 
completely forgot he was there for no reason at all. Um, okay, and then the game just says, no, you're not getting him. Sometimes the hitboxes of these enemies in these levels can be a little weird. But that goes for any speedway level in any Spyro game. Now, where was this last, uh, one of these dudes? Oh, there it is. I see it. No, we're gonna beat it. No problemo. Nice. And there we go. Wow, that was not a very long level either. Kind of glad we did that one in this episode. Nice, there's another 300 gems. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon in the links below, and I will see you guys all next time when we take on, I guess, Lofty Castle, since we're right here. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.